Good day, folks. Welcome to m and Made Simple. I'm your host, Coach Alexander. For those of you who are here for the very first time, please do not hesitate to subscribe to this channel so that you get all the latest updates in relation to monitoring and evaluation. And maybe just to explain who I am, my name is Coach Alexander. I've been doing this for 10 years now, actually over 10 years. I'm becoming a veteran in monitoring and evaluation. I started this channel in 2016 and it has helped a lot of people around the world. And you'll be amazed how many visits have come to this channel. About 2 million have been visiting this channel and they've derived so much benefits from it. So please do well to subscribe to this channel. So let's start the journey right now. Today we're gonna to be looking at the theory of change in monitoring and evaluation. But before I go any further, I just want to make sure you understand that in the month of August, there's going to be a special training which will be lasting for four weeks. The link is in the description below. If you want to participate in this training, please register. Don't hesitate. This is going to be one of the best trainings that has ever happened since we started this channel. So my encouragement to you guys, register below. Uh, registration is free, but the thing is that the training is $50 per participant. So at least you have ample time to prepare fans to participate, but registration is free. You book your place so that you get access to this training that I'm gonna be having with a lot of people in the month of August to September. Okay, so let's get started. What is the theory of change? So this thing uh, called theory of change is a question that pops up a lot among my students but i want to explain this to different people so that you get a common understanding of why this is important how it fits in in the project and what it does for us who are m and d experts okay so in a nutshell i like to explain it by means of a representation of a diagram okay because the theory of change is best explained by looking at this image so what the theory of change is, it simply shows the linkages of how you're going to achieve your impact. So if you look here, you've got your ultimate impact. But for you to come to this place, for you to get to the, where you want to go in terms of registering the overall change you want to see, you need to start from, um, from this point, okay? So basically, what I'm saying here is that the theory of change gives you a, a visual representation of how you're going to achieve the change that you want to be. And in this example, the change that this project, by the way, I, I downloaded this image from Accountability Lab, so you can go and Google it, say Accountability Lab Theory of Change. So the thing is that, they are saying that they want to achieve an impact where they have a more inclusive and accountable society. And this is a long-term outcome. So how do they do this? Well, the picture shows that, first of all, you have to build relationships. You have to capacitate the human capital, basically the human resource. You need financial information, I mean financial resources, and then information. So once you have this in place, you are going to now achieve outputs that lead to better collaborations through campaigns, training feedback mechanisms, and multi-stakeholder initiatives for policy change. So already they've set the base that for you to get to your long-term impact, you need to have this in place building relationships, financial resources, and once these activities are done, the output is realized. And when this set of outputs are realized, you get intermediate outcomes. And these intermediate out outcomes are the knowledge and skills, collision building, communities for change, which translates now into you in achieving the overall impact that you want to see. This is actually, in my view, the starting point 
to building a, a logical framework matrix. Okay, so I'll, I'll explain what a logical framework matrix is later on. But um, if you are subscribed to this channel, you can get access to some of the videos that I've done because it does explain the logical framework matrix. Okay, so the LFA, as you can see before you, is what is defined in this image. So you've got the objectively verifiable indicators, you've got the source of uh, source and means of verifications, you've got the assumptions, you've got the intervention logic. So the logical framework now gives a detailed breakdown of the theory of change. So as you could see, the theory of change was graphically represented and very summarized. But when you go to the logical framework, it's much more detailed. So I like to think of the theory of change, actually, uh, I, I mean, I like to think of the LFA as an expanded version of the theory of change, okay? Because there you'll find the outputs, uh, activities are there, outputs are there, outcomes, and then the impact is there. So this format I've downloaded is just one uh, type of LFA, but the you, you can go on the internet. There are so many examples that you can use to, to better understand what the LFA is. Okay, so now just to break it down to you, the components of a theory of change are mainly five, just as you would find in the LFA. You've got, okay, for you, for those of you who don't know what LFA means, it's logical framework analysis, but I can say even logical framework matrix, which is LFM. So the logical framework matrix has um, five components, okay, just like the theory of change. So you've got the inputs. So the inputs are really the resources that go into the project. So you've got financial resources, you've got human capital, and you've also got time, okay? All these are important resources that go into a project. Then after that, you have the activities. Now activities are the actual uh, interventions that you do. So take for example, if you are going to conduct trainings, those are activities. If you are going to conduct sensitization meetings, those are activities. So the activities are the planned interventions or actions. Then the outputs are now the, the product, the immediate results that you get after you've implemented these activities. So if you go and sensitize people, if you conduct sensitization meetings, the immediate result is that these people are going to be knowledgeable on a certain thing. Then after these uh, outputs are achieved, you've got the outcomes which are now the, the intermediate um, uh, results, I can say, because the, the long-term results are the, the impacts, okay? Those are the results you, 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 you see even up to five years, okay? But the outcomes are more like intermediate, and then you, you get to see changes here and there. So this is how the theory of change is structured. And you can see that it closely relates to the LF and logical framework matrix. So why the theory of change matters in MD? The, the reasons really, guys, there are four main reasons that I was able to, to gather, having done this activity, monitoring and evaluation for quite some time. The thing is that the theory of change uh, ensures alignment between project out uh, activities and desired outcomes. So when you have that theory of change in a summarized form, it gives you that uh, aligned understanding. Okay, so as an m and officer, you are able to easily understand um, how activities are linked to the outcomes. 
The second thing is logic. You see, the, there's a logical understanding to these things. Eh? Again, I cannot uh, overemphasize the point I mentioned earlier on, that the LFA and the theory of change are closely linked, except that the theory of change, change is, a, a, is a representation in a summarized form. Okay, so the theory of change actually fits into the logical framework understanding, which helps us M&D officers really know why things are happening, why certain activities are taking place, and then that will make us be more effective in our M&D measurement. The issue is this, without indicators, we cannot go anywhere. So as M&D officers, the theory of change helps us even derive the indicators that we are, we are going to be measuring. Mind you, and I'm not lying to you guys, I've seen certain institutions uh, de develop a theory of change, but they don't have a logical framework matrix. So in such an event, you guys are supposed to look at the theory of change and look at the indicators and try as much as possible to to use those um, indicators to make a measurement of change. Then lastly, but not the least, is that it facilitates learning. Now, the theory of change is not something you just develop, okay? And I want to emphasize this point. Please, guys, listen to me. Do not just uh, wake up one morning sit down and come up with something that you think is a theory of change, you must involve stakeholders, okay? The reason why stakeholders are important in uh, developing a theory of change is because different stakeholders have different interests, but all these interests are feeding into your goals as a project. So you're supposed to bring these people together Analyze the issues, get to know how things can actually, how a certain activities can bring the change that you want to see. Remember, the context is different. Eh? What works in one country may not necessarily work in, a different, in another country. And that's why stakeholder consultation is key. So don't be afraid to spend money in order to bring people together and brainstorm on what how best you can design this theory of change. And then another thing is that uh, sometimes you have to, uh, I'm sure you understand what a logic model is. If you don't, I don't know if I did any video on the logic model, but I know what it is. If you don't just do some bit of research, they are quite similar because they it just shows you a, a a visual representation of how certain things link into uh, other uh, interventions. Then lastly, we need to know that um, we, we have to understand that the theory of change evolves eh, over time. And the reason is that uh, in the first phase of implementation of a project, after you've done your implementation, you get to learn and refine the way you do things so that in the next phase, you become better at implementing your project. And then in the third phase, you may even perfect how you implement the project. So this does not just come as an accident because when you do the evaluation of your first phase project, it feeds into the next phase and the other. So meaning that your theory of change by by default has to be refined and it evolves. And as it evolves, the project implementation becomes better as you go on. So now how do we apply theory of change in m and When you see a theory of change, please m and officers, directors, coordinators, be, get excited because you know the truth of the matter is this theory of change actually gives you an opportunity to, to tease out the indicators 
and develop data collection tools. So it is these activities that help you uh, with the analysis, which eventually brings out the information that you want to communicate to stakeholders. So the, the, the communication to stakeholders, you know, the stakeholders are more interested in whether the project is bringing the change that uh, the intended change that it was designed to do. So when you have the theory of change, what the stakeholders will do, they'll look at the theory of change and they'll look at your report and they'll be able to, to detect whether indeed so this designed project is actually fulfilling its intended purpose. Now, what are the challenges and limitations? I'm sure you connect with me very well, guys, that the, the challenges that comes with this theory of change is the complexity, okay? And that's why sometimes um, I know people tend to shun using the theory of change. They would rather go to the logical framework. So as a challenge, sometimes it is complex and time-consuming even to build, especially when the stakeholders are involved in the process. Then the assumptions uh, may not always hold true. Okay, so sometimes you may put some assumptions there, but they may not always hold true, and that presents a challenge. And lastly, but not the least, uh, the challenge of uh, identifying indicators that are reliable and can measure the, the impacts that you want to see can also be a challenge sometimes. So those are the challenges and limitations when it comes to dealing with the theory of change. Okay, guys, I want to thank you so much for finding the time to, to watch this video. So please don't hesitate. There's a link below. Register for that uh, four weeks training program and it, you'll be booking your, yourself a place in a training that's going to help you master the art of M&D. Until we meet again, see you on the other side.